I think for me, uh, my credo is compose before you orchestrate. And I think if you have immediate access to every, like, you know, an alto clarinet with a, a, a bass flute and um, an eight-piece French horn section, um, you might tend to orchestrate before you compose. And I think that is a problem. It's very easy to be seduced by all the fancy plugins and sounds. So anyway, um, my template, um, I was helped a lot by Aaron Navizi uh, from Bunker Studio in New York, an old friend of mine, and he helped me set this up. Just the, the, the bus routing, the ins and outs and all that sort of thing. Okay, so um, as soon as you open my template, this is what you see. Instrument one there um, opens with a contact instrument, which is empty. Um, so I would probably normally load a piano into that straight away. Remember, it's about composing before you orchestrate, and I like to compose with piano. Um, the other instruments there, the other five instrument tracks, that I have ready to go are deactivated. Um, that means it just the, the template opens quicker. Look, this is very simple. Uh, it should be quite quick to go through. Um, the most complicated stuff, if we switch to the mixer view, um, the stems. So, of course, stemming out your piece when you're sending the de music deliverables to the mix, the dub. Um, obviously you send stems, so, um, as well as a full mix. This is set up so that we have a very quick and easy way of routing, routing, uh, for some of you, the, um, audio tracks, instrument tracks, MIDI tracks, well, you know, audio and instrument tracks to different stems. Now I always have, uh, the five stems. So typically that will be. And I tend to like put percussion and drums into stem D, which you see there is master D. Um, and you would typically stem out um, very low sounds, say low strings or low bass uh, synth stuff, um, short notes, long notes when, when we're talking strings. Um, it varies. It depends on the project and what kind of music you're writing, of course. So anyway, uh, that's probably a topic for something else, uh, another film, and maybe I can show you specific projects. However, um, so you see Master A, B, C, D, E. Now each of those, so let's look at Master A, that has two sand effects. Now, verb A1 is over here. Um, and that's the fab filter, all right? And the second reverb there is, um, there we go, some eventide. Um, now, um, I can have a combination of both those um, reverbs. So obviously each stem has to have its own reverbs because, and we can see over here, stem A, reverb one, stem A, reverb two, Stem B, verb one, verb two, so on and so on. Um, you know, when you're, if you were to have just one sand reverb effect for all the stems, then obviously um, when you bounce down the stems and you put them back together again, the other end, your, your effects will be completely misrepresented. Um, so, uh, that's that. Now, uh, in some of the other films I've been uploading recently, I've been showing you some mixes I've been doing, and I've this um, new thing which I picked up from a mix with a master's film. I've just called it Feeder. Uh, basically, the input bus for Feeder is called Buenos. So you can see everything is going in to the Feeder track, the Feeder bus. So when I change the level here, that's changing the level of everything. And then that is going into the master bus here. Um, I'll talk about the master bus in a second. Um, oh, and also, um, let me just go back to the stems. Sorry. Um, I forgot to mention, I have some very gentle mix bus compression on each stem. 
in uh, you know, specifically the UAD Neve uh, 33609C, which is a precision stereo limiter compressor. Okay, so uh, back to my feeder track. As I explained previously in other films, I can send more of the track into the master bus or less. Um, and this enables me to push the effects on the master bus more. So, um, for example, uh, any compressor or saturating or EQ or any, any, uh, any effect on the master bus, you know, I can change the character, make it more crunchy, less crunchy, that sort of thing. So, for example, um, as you see on my master bus, they're deactivated at start, just makes it quicker. Let's activate that one. <clears throat> so this is the uh, Studio A800 tape plugin from Universal Audio, which I love. Let's open that up. Um, and, you know, of course, it's specific to the music you're doing, but typically, I would uh, go for the GPO 9, 30 IPS, uh, maybe increase the input a bit, but decrease the output. Okay, now, uh, obviously, if I increase the fender bus, which is, sorry, the fender, the feeder bus, which is feeding the master bus, um, if I increase it, I'm going to start saturating the sound more using this tape plugin, um, which is an effect I might want, or it uh, you know, I might not want that. So I have that control there. Um, that's really useful for me. That's part of my template now. It's a new addition. Um, let's just activate this one. So, yeah, the God Particle. We don't know what it does, um, but I like it. And typically I would turn this section off and I'd have about 50%, depends on the track. Um, I just like it for now, for now. Uh, and then activating this at the very, uh, in the last insert on my master bus, I'd have the SSL bus compressor. Um, as you can see here, I have the SSL, uh, the eight, is it the UC8 and the UF1 or the UC1 and the UF8? Anyway, um, so I have I can control, as you can see there, the bus compressor. Um, and I, I typically, I would just have it so it's just tickling. Um, I don't want to, uh, to, to do too much. Um, okay, now uh, one really important factor here is that uh, when you're sending stems, if you have any master bus effects, obviously the master bus effects are going onto each stem. Uh, so, when they put the stems back together in the dub, in the film mix, it's compounding the effect of those master effects, which is not good. So, um, sort of why the deactivated, uh, a lot of the time I won't be using them. Instead, um, I almost treat each stem master uh, as it's as 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 sort of individual master buses. Again, it all depends on what kind of music I'm doing. If I'm writing a track, then yeah, we use the master bus. If I'm writing something that's going to a film mix, then I tend to avoid anything on the master bus. So it's very film specific setup. Um, but however, if this was uh, a, a completely a film specific setup uh, i.e. if I never use this to do other things um, there would be a lot more detail here uh, you would have print tracks um, and I can show you perhaps in another film um, how that looks it can get a lot more complex which is you know amazing and that's where I think uh, or when you get people who specialize in that sort of thing, uh, like my friend Aaron Navizi from Bunker Studio in Brooklyn. Um, you know, he specializes in film mixing, so his, his template is incredible. And, um, you know, it's the kind of thing where you just hit record and it prints all the stems at the same time um, and total mixes and 
um, it saves so much time if you have 40 cues and you need to bounce down stems for every one, then obviously it needs to all happen at the same time. Um, so I'm aware that this template isn't complete in that respect. But for me, it keeps me agile and flexible. And that's the most important thing for me. Also, the other thing I should mention is that as well as the main out here, you'll see something called dialogue. Okay, that's simply uh, when I import a film, which is typically on a QuickTime, into this, I want the audio of the film to go to its own output, um, which is here called dialogue, which is basically, you know, everything that's not music will go through there. Um, so uh, when I'm bouncing everything down, obviously, you know, obviously I still want to hear what's happening in the film, but when I'm bouncing or printing the music, we don't want that to be in the final mix. So it's there, it's audible. It's, uh, I can, you know, I have the ability to change the levels of see the master bus and the dialogue bus. So, you know, I can do a little bit of mixing. Also, if I want, I can export a QuickTime from, you know, directly from Pro Tools. And um, often I would do that to send to the director so he or she can, you know, give me feedback notes on the music. Um, and it's always good for them to obviously hear the dialogue uh, while they're watching the QuickTime. So it means I can do a rough mix. And, you know, typically the, the music would be right down, the dialogue would be right up. Um, unless there's something I really want them to hear. But you know, a more realistic mix is that. <laughs> anyway. Um, okay, so I think that's it. Um, I have this template set up because there are certain repeated tasks which I want to avoid doing over and over again because, you know, you're doing, say, like 30 to 40 cues in a film or a TV show um, if you have to set up <laughs> the buses and the, um, the insert effects, the master bus effects, uh, instrument tracks for each time, um, you're looking at, say, you know, it's going to take six minutes um, if you're doing that for every cube, but not necessarily limited to each cube. You may do, you may write, say, 10 versions of Q1. Um, you know, so that sort of repeated activity adds up uh, and takes, would take days uh, of, out of your life. <laughs> okay, yeah, to sum up, the template is about saving time. It's about agility and flexibility. It is about composing before orchestrating and it is familiarity. So I hope that was useful to you. Um, what I'll do is I will upload a copy of this. Um, so you can download this template if you wish um, for Pro Tools. And um, I'll put a link in the description. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you found it useful. Please do subscribe um, to see more films like this. Also, leave a comment if you want. Um, you know, tell me what I'm doing wrong, right? Or if you have any questions about how uh, I'm using this, maybe I missed out something. You know, please leave a comment. Um, I'm happy to respond to those. Okay, thanks very much. See you soon.